February 24, 2023. From the beginning of its history as a nation, the United States has had a completed relationship with the native people who have lived on the North American continent for thousands and thousands of years. Starting from the pilgrims who established the Palamos colony, colony in the in the early seventeenth、uh, centuries to the U.S. officially declaring its independence. From Great Britain in seventeen seventy six, U.S. settlers claimed ownership or land that Native Americans had been living on for a long time. In the two centuries after achieving independence, the U.S. was focused on continued expense expansion. This leads to many practices and policies aimed at destroying Native American identities, identities, to make it easier to claim more of their lands across North America. The U.S. pressured Native Americans to abandon their ways of life. And、uh, assimilate, assimilate into the U.S. way of life. This process took place in many ways, including through wars, treaties, treaties, boarding schools, and forced relocation. One major policy that Defined the way the U.S. government interacted with Native Americans, with lasting, lasting effect effects over generations, was the nineteen eighty seven George Severity Severity. Act. Starting in 1887, the Doors Sever Severity Act shaped U.S. policy around Native Americans. This act is commonly known as the Doors Act, as part of the continued effort to assimilate. Native Americans, the Dodd Act allowed the U.S. government to divide and give out Native American lands to Native American individuals in 160 acre parcels for farming. This forced the Native Americans to treat land like white Americans as personal. Property, per, property, property, which was now the way most Native Americans viewed their relationship with their lands. The parceling up of farmland also forced Native people to farm in ways that were different from their customary. Customary practices. In order to receive a land parcel for farming, Native Americans had to enroll on a list and wait to be granted land in exchange for being assigned these parcels of land. These Native American individuals were granted U.S. citizenship. Unclaimed or surplus tribal tribal land 
was then sold to non-native people. The non-native people gained control of that land, and the U.S. government used the money from the sales to establish boarding schools for native children, which the government called Indian schools. In these schools, the U.S. government expanded its efforts to end native traditional lifestyles. The schools were designed to assimilate Native Americans in one generation, or by the time the kids were adults and started their own families. Children had to move far away from their homes. The schools taught Native American children the school subjects, subjects and the social habits of white Americans. They banned anything that showed Native American culture. They forced the Native children to cut their hair just like white Americans and change their names. Native children were not allowed to speak their home languages or practice their own religions. Many children in these schools suffered abuse, became ill, and even died. Those who lived to continue attending the schools grew up feeling disconnected from their cultures. The culture Laws caused by these schools has had long-lasting effects even today. By 1932, the giving out and the selling of land as part of the Dawes Act resulted in the loss of more than two-thirds of the 138 million. Acres Native Americans land had held prior to the act. The cultural loss from boarding schools resulted in Native children missing valuable teachings and feeling out of place at home. Additionally, the Native children never learned to farm, so they struggled to maintain the. Parcels of land they inherited from their families. During the time of the Dawes Sovereignty Act, the U.S. government considered granting citizenship to all Native Americans, even beyond those who accepted parcels of farmland. Many Native people. Were opposed to the idea for various reasons. Some thought that the U.S. government wanted to grant them citizenship in order to gain more power over them and continue to force them to become more like white Americans. Plus, many Native Americans had and still have. Separate nations within the U.S. on designated reservation land. As a result, some Native Americans did not feel the need for U.S. citizenship because they be belonged belonged to their own self-governed nations. However. As more and more of North America was claimed by the U.S., Native Americans found themselves living in the areas under U.S. control, but without citizenship. This meant they did not have voting power over laws and the elected office officials. That affect them. Therefore, some Native Americans wanted to, wanted U.S. citizenship. On June second, 
1924, the U.S. Congress granted citizenship to all Native Americans born in the U.S. by passing the Indian Citizenship Act. This act is commonly known as the Snyder Act, named after the New York representative who pre who presented it to the U.S. Congress. However, even after the 1924 Indian Citizenship Act was passed, some Native Americans. Were still not allowed to vote because the right to vote was governed by state laws. Some states continued to bar Native Americans from voting until 1957. Additionally, even in the states where they had the right to vote, Native Americans faced discrimination. Like difficult tests and the scare tactics, it wasn't until the 1965 Voting Rights Act that U.S. federal law protected their right to vote. During this time, the U.S. continued to. Force Native American children into boarding schools. Both of these realities supported what some people had predicted: that granting Native Americans citizenship did not actually help them much. Instead, it gave the U.S. more power over them. A 1928 study, known as the Marine Report, assessed the, the issues that Native Americans faced in the U.S. The report revealed that the U.S. government's policies had oppressed Native Americans and severely hurt their cultures and.、Uh, Societies. The people suffered from poverty, exploitation, and discrimination. This study spurred the passage of the 1934 Indian Reorganization Act. This act returned some of the surplus land from the 1887 draw. Draws Severity Act to Native Americans and urged tribes to engage in active self-government. The U.S. government invested in the development of Native American health care, education, and community structure. Since then, quality of life for some Native Americans. Has improved. However, some never fully recovered from years and years of mistreatment and loss. Today, some Native Americans in the U.S. run su successful business, while others still live in poverty and challenging conditions. In some ways, the U.S. and state governments. Have continued to treat threaten native self governance and the rights. In others, the U.S. government has tried to make up for some of the ways it wronged it. It wronged it wronged native populations over the course of its history. Okay, thank you for watching.